If you have any questions or concerns about this week's episode, please call or text producer Dan at 778-288-9255. Start the party, Dan! Hello, friends, idiots, and friends who are also idiots. Welcome to your favorite podcast about social media and rejection. It is Block Party. This is episode number 279. I'm John. I'm Stefan. And with us this week is a returning guest to the program, a fan favorite, and my wife, Becca. Hi, Becca. Hello. What's up? Hello. What up, dog? Nice sweater. Is that that like a little fox? I think wolf? it's a yeah. I think it's supposed to be a fox or a wolf. Okay. I just it's, thought it was cute. That's yeah. a cool sweater. Did you see? You. Uh, uh, other friend of the show, Derek, uh, is in Vancouver. Derek you see is no of friend wa- of mine. Okay. Well, did you see the video of him walking up to the coyote and offering it coffee? No. <laughs> no. What? No. That was very funny. He Does was going he have the rabies co- now? No. He. By the way, John, I'm drinking. I have the same soda. It's really good. Is that the vanilla? The vanilla one? Coke Zia. Yeah. That, sh- that shit is really good. It's delicious. I it's didn't really nice. love the cherry Coke. It's a little too medicinal, but the vanilla is the vanilla one good. is quite nice. Yeah, I've, I've been I've been sipping on but it that. has but caffeine no. in it, so I might go crazy. Oh, you're going to go. Yeah, I, I already knew you were going to go crazy this episode. But no, Derek walked up to a coyote and was like, here, doggy, here, your doggy, you want some coffee? And then like ran away. But it was oh, a very it didn't, funny like, video. didn't like bite his face off or anything? No, no. But it was a really funny video. <laughs> that would have been cool. Yeah. I don't yeah. know if I've really ever been that close to a coyote before. Do they have them in Calgary? Oh, not? yeah. Yeah. I was leaving. I work night shifts sometimes mm-hmm. and I was leaving work the other day and like almost got attacked by like a swarm of them. Oh, my God. I could God. hear them on the other side of where I parked my car and they were like just going fucking nuts while I was trying to get into my car. Holy shit. Yeah. Well, when we were in. Um, it was actually, uh, Becca thought it was coyotes, but it was actually construction workers hiding in the bush, uh, just <laughs> commenting on her looks. Oh, my God. Okay. They were just like, oh, oh, hey, John, settle down. Okay. <laughs> I'm Thank very, you, Dan. I- I'm settled. Three minutes into this episode. Thank I'm you, Dan. Settled. Take it easy. Yeah. It's fine. I said uh, I had caffeine. He had caffeine. So. No, I know. The caffeine is just going to. Well, it's he's going to crash problem. in about like 45 minutes. So it's fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you have to put me to sleep halfway yeah. through. Genuinely, this. that will be your nap time. Oh, absolutely. Oh, as soon as this episode's over, I'm going directly to yeah. bed. There's John, no do you remember uh, when we were in Joshua Tree last year hearing the, I, the, I guess that must have been coyotes, but the pack of like wild dogs going completely ape shit at night? Mm, I don't know if I remember that or Maybe not. Maybe you weren't there. Maybe you were inside, but when, when we were outside, we could hear it and it was like uh, really crazy. It's crazy uh, sounding. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it it, sounds, it sounds like they're dying, right? Like, because they're just like, like screaming. It sounds like a horror movie. Yeah. 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 That's fucked up, dude. Yeah, I have yep. been. I guess the coyotes I have been near is the Arizona coyotes. That's right. That's right, John. Hey, well, John, where are we going for the summer summit this year? Uh, not Arizona. Okay, is it a Thought surprise I could trick again? You there. Uh, I, I mean, mean it's, it's it's not as big of a deal. We haven't time, told the guys. Like, so. We told them it's in the lower mainland. So. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's going to be a little more low key. I feel the place like. is sick though. I've yeah. seen it. It's yeah. sick. Well, yeah. I was going to say it's probably tougher because. Th- the damn NDP government. I mean, this is a, an objectively good thing that they did, where they made it yeah. so you your Air, Airbnb you can't have like multiple houses that you're renting out mm-hmm. on Airbnb. Uh, but it did make it tougher, presumably, to find a place. It did. Yes, it was harder to find a place, and I don't know. It's possible the place we're staying at is illegal. I don't really know. It seems well, it like it's on. To, it just has to be their primary residence, right? So they have to live there a certain amount of time in the yes, year. Yes, exactly. Think, so. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's really nice. I mean, I think in the past when we've done like local summits, we have just uh, we've showed you guys the the property. So I don't yeah. know why we haven't done that, but we're just I guess we're just not at the moment. Just in surprise mode because it's interesting because I feel like I've been to I guess three so far. Obviously, last year's was Have like. Have you been to three? Yeah, I think so. Right, the one or in Langley, the one in the one in Chilliwack, and then oh last yeah, year. okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. But the Langley and Chilliwack ones are interesting to me because they're like these big mansions that we're staying at for the weekend. But it's so clear that no one actually lives in them. Yeah. Oh, definitely. So, yeah. so it'll be interesting this year if it's presumably someone actually lives there most of the time, and it it'll feel like more like a real house almost. But I guess we'll see. Having seen the pictures, I would say wait to see it in person. 
Okay. Yeah. I really? think there will be a wow factor. Okay. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, we got a little lucky. We were we were jamming we were jamming on places for a while, and yeah. then because you and Chad are very good at setting all this stuff up. Obviously. Well, we, we try, but yeah, we we nothing. It was everything was just kind of okay. Yeah, not amazing. And we sure. had looked a couple different times, and we were just sort of getting to the point where we we're like, okay, we'll just have to kind of settle for something. And then this place popped up, and it seems pretty sick. So wow, I think it's going to be a good uh, be a good time for the boys. Nice time for us to explore. Each explore other. and uh, of course yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 that's what i mean yeah that's what we do you know of course i wonder if i'll i'll still be not drinking then probably but maybe yeah, I'll, is that I'll, your I'll whole thing now you're not you don't drink anymore yeah isn't it fucking annoying <laughs> no i don't know oh, okay um no like but i you, think like i find you annoying or like it's annoying to not drink no not drinking is like super easy because yeah. there's so many other options i think you're like you're in a good I, okay, I don't say not drinking. For some people, it's not easy, to be clear. Mm. But like... It was easy like, for me. It was fine. Yeah. yeah. But this is just like... This is basically the same thing as beer. Yeah, it's but just, I have noticed, though, now you're drinking these like non-alcoholic beers at like 10 a.m. Like we're recording at like 11 a.m. You're having a non-alc beer. Yeah, it's non-alcoholic. Who cares? Yeah, that seems like a bit of a... Stefan, we should go out and get move. drunk sometime. No, Dan. I don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'll hang out with you. Actually, John, you're going to be here in like pretty soon right next week yeah yeah we should yeah. do our we haven't done our annual blocked party dinner for a while i know i just don't know if i'm going to be able to because i'm only back for like four days and i'm doing shows like every day yeah you can do so it without you you got yeah you guys yeah. can just you guys can go whenever That's you true. want put it yeah. on the block party tab but yeah uh, i mean we could do a lunch or something we can figure something out yeah sure. we can we where, can definitely where, you, where you we stand? can definitely figure something out yeah maybe on the friday we'll we'll discuss okay. well i'm staying in white rock that's right, always the problem wondering. is like yeah, yeah, i come yeah. back now and i stay at my parents place and they live in white rock so it's just yeah. like not as easy for me to to hang out with the with the boys with the fellas yeah, yeah. have you guys gone past our old building since we left how's it looking I don't think I've really been around there. Okay. I don't go outside uh, anymore. So. It's still, <laughs> I th I think it still uh, kind of looks Fuck? like shit. Yeah. yeah, is my is my guess. People have sent yeah. us pics, and it still looks like it's as under construction as it was when we left. Yeah, because you you moved what six September six so months ago ish eight, eight, seven yeah seven Almost months eight. that's wow that's crazy but yeah um and it was like really under construction then and had mm. been for a while. Yeah, it was probably a year. Uh, yeah, if not, we probably more. lived in there I'll, for a year. With I'll probably it. be going by it later today, and I'll see if I can if I can take a look. Um, yeah, the last time someone sent me a pic like three weeks ago, and it looked like it was still they still had all the scaffolding up, all of the like um you know they put that like rain tarp yeah. like over that that was all still there. So damn, because I thought they were because they have to do the whole building, which is an entire city block. And there's like four separate buildings. So I just kind of thought they would be done the building by now. Like, yes, they got like our building. Like I yeah. thought for sure the the whole construction was going to take like five years. But I thought the actual like our building would have been done by now. Right. But it seems like it's not. And then they also got to do the inside. They're doing all the pipes also. Jesus. So, yeah. I mean, it's, it's so funny. They didn't just tear that place down. It's well, incredible. It's one of the stupidest things I've ever been a part of. I mean, I didn't have a vote on the strata, but no. I mean, it was, yeah. was nonsense. The it was literally just people not wanting it. to not wanting to leave. Right. Like, yeah. which I understand, but it's like, I think they <laughs> just think that like at the end of it, they're going to be able to sell their places for like a million dollars. And I just don't think that's going to happen. No, I just think that there's nowhere else in Vancouver to go that's affordable. So they didn't want to. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That makes Anyways. sense. Yeah. What? No, I was just curious if they'd seen the building. I know, but then you're like, anyways, like you wanted to change well, it's a the segue. subject. It's a segue. So okay, what are we, what? What are, so what 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 are we doing about? a segue to? You said anyways. Becca, Becca go ahead. So here we go. Um, How's John's asshole doing? Okay, well, that's. I actually like, am curious about sense, that too. Like in what sense though? Dan is he, well, he has is ass he, troubles doesn't he is he shitting his right ass is troubles, he shitting okay I think are fine since the, he got a bidet though yeah ass troubles have been I think pretty ass good. troubles have been under like under control for but, the, under but control. the bidet doesn't help with like indigestion he, and stuff right he did have some frustrating times with the bidet though since we moved in oh, oh. like what like it's not working it, with the new toilet really I've had to change oh. the toilet seat twice 
Oh, like the seat is not, it doesn't fit on the seat or something? It's like cracking the toilet seat, the bidet. Yeah, the toilet seat cracked. I didn't, I never what? had, uh, yeah. So like, cause. Your, your ass is so big that it cracked <laughs> yes. the toilet seat. <laughs> yes. yes. My, my ass is a planet basically. But yeah, so basically I had bought, um, I had bought a slow close toilet seat. Cause when we first got here, the toilet seat that was on there did not fit with the bidet. Sure. So it's like, okay, we'll just get a new toilet seat. So I just, and I don't know, I just go by. I'm like, oh, I'll get the slow clothes, get a nice was it, toilet was it a, seat. Was it a Bemis? It was a Kohler, I believe. Okay. That's, seat. I mean, that's even better. Bemis is a great brand, but it's more of a, a lunch pail brand, I would say. Well, so. I'm going to get to that in a second. So okay. the Kohler, so I buy this slow clothes plastic nice. Kohler seat, which sure. is nice, but the slow close mechanism also conflicted with the bidet. The hinges are like in a different. Exactly. The, yeah. So it would, so it sat uh, a little above the toilet. Right. So like when you would sit on it, it would like go down and lie flush with the sure, toilet. Sure. But if you just put it down and no one was sitting on it, there'd be a gap like about that between right. the, the seat and the toilet. So then one day I just went to go sit down on it and the fucking seat just snapped. Holy shit. Did it I cut up your ass under the pressure? No, thank God. I, I thought it might cut up my ass, but no. So then I had to tape it. So then we had like a taped up toilet seat for a oh little my bit. Just God. truly like not good stuff. And then I went and got a new toilet seat. I got a Bemis and it was a wood. I got a wooden one instead of a plastic one. Interesting. So now okay. we're, is it now slow close as well? It is also slow close. A wooden but slow the, close. That's going to be but nice. The yeah. attachments were in a different spot. So, and, sure. and I should say when I say wooden, like it's still white. It's not yes, like, yes, a, yes. it's not like the old school. You'd go into some people's house and they'd have like a literal wood toilet yeah. seat. Yeah. It's not that I'm not a fucking loser, but <laughs> um, but yeah, so that, so we've got, we've gone through three, we're on our third toilet seat in eight months since we've moved in. Oh my God. To and, accommodate the bidet. Yeah. And that's toilet chat. Yeah. That there is, you go. That is well, heavy. you should just get the, uh, the, the seat that has the bidet built in the Toto seat. Or I know we might have but to do that next if this, doesn't yeah. Work. And like, that's obviously more, more expensive, expensive, but though, they are they? expensive, but, but they're you, like 500 bucks or something. Yeah. But like they, I mean, it's going to, it'll change your life, obviously, but that's one where you have to be like a hundred percent sure that it's going to properly fit too, yeah. right? Like you have to make sure it's going to fit, but it should fit most elongated bowls. I think that's um, what we have. We have an elongated bowl of downstairs. Course. in the basement. Yeah. Yeah. So my shitting toilet is in the basement. So, so looking at that, I mean, maybe you can maybe look we for have like four toilets. I piss in all the toilets, but I only shit in the basement. I was going to say, which you one have... do you jack off it? The basement one, the well, basement. Well, well, the basement one or the middle floor one. It depends. Or on the who, middle floor one. Interesting. Depends on where I'm. Yeah. If you guys stay here, the toilet that will you'll be yeah, using will, will be, be the one I jack off into. into. Okay, that's oh, okay. good to know. I was wondering. I would have thought the upstairs one would be the shitting toilet. No, because that's in our. So that's we have the master bed. Yeah, we have an ensuite. Right. So you don't want the smell going into the bedroom, I guess. Yeah, it's more out of respect to Becca. I have shit yeah. in it because it also has a bidet. The people who lived here before left yeah. a bidet on that toilet. Wow. Okay. But it's a it's a bit of a low rent bidet. I think it probably would work good for Becca. Um, you think Becca, the, for, Becca would use a low rent? No, bidet? no, just for the front because it's more like aimed at the front almost. I don't think it works. I think it's broken. No, it works. I've, I've used to... it recently. Oh, okay. But Can it's just you... like the angle it sprays at. It's a little bit more. Of and you a, can't like, change the angle on it. Broken. Potentially. You can't, you can't change the angle. To be able to. Yeah. Vaginal bidet more than a butthole sure. okay. bidet. A butthole. Okay. Yeah. What? Yeah. No, okay. I mean, that's. I'm just telling the truth. No, don't... that's. That's. I know what you're saying. I mean, that's, you know. Yeah. I get it. So like yeah. if I want to use it on my ass, I kind of have to almost like, yeah, I was like just really like hitting sink. your balls. Yeah. I got to Well, and then I got to like sink down in the sure. toilet seat for it to like hit my ass. Yeah. Yeah. Cause yeah. if I just let it go, it would hit my nuts. Yeah. Yeah. Which is really funny, but it's kind of yeah. nice. I, when I stayed Yo. at the Ritz Carlton in Montreal, you could aim it and I had yeah. to go on the ball and it felt real nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. right. Cause I, yeah, you just have, Hey, if you're, if you're a recent listener to the show, producer Dan only has one testicle. <laughs> <laughs> I just, maybe people don't know that, right? It's yeah. It's probably know. good to get filled in. It's weird seeing Dan in kind of a different setup. I know it's like the same room, I guess, technically, but it's not, the lighting's just not the same. You know, usually no. he's, he's so well lit, right? Yeah. I'm having to use my old webcam because my, all of my, basically all of my gear is like stacked up in my bathroom right now. Damn, and it's, like it's, it's like an, it's like another week until they replace the floor. Possibly more, yeah. I don't really oh know. Oh my god! So I'm gonna kill myself. Well, don't. Okay, okay. Well, Dan, don't no. kill yourself because we, you, we, you're our no, producer I'm just kidding. I and could our never friend. 
<laughs> if I did do that, I'd at least make sure to edit the episodes before. Okay. So. Thank you. That's very Thank you. thoughtful. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, as long Thank as you're you. doing that, then yeah. it's... Yeah, Thank it's, you. That's most, that's most of my concern. Yeah. <laughs> Dan. Yeah, I gotta uh, tell you. Dan's been having some crazy diarrhea recently, I'll tell you that. How do you know? Are we gonna that? talk about how this? How do you now? think how do you think oh, I know? Oh my god, he's sending pics? Yeah, he just sent me a pic the other day. Yeah, do you oh. want to, do you want should I make a group chat with you? I'll, John? No. Can... I'll just say I'll just say what Dan said to me. Oh, One sec. My Here. God. I don't remember what I said, but I'm getting really oh god, I've got the picture looks so fucked. It does look like a Jackson Pollock painting. I'm oh. getting I'm getting really good at spraying around the bowl. Like is, you're trying to make a mess. It well, looks I'm like try. It looks like it looks like uh, it looks like beef broth that someone has sprayed out of an air gun. I think we should get Dan one of those bathrooms that, like, when you leave, you close the door and it like yeah. self cleans. It the cleans whole room, like on How maybe? to with John Wilson when he gets when he yeah. like stays like the inside the bathroom. Ones? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to be cutting all this out as well. No, no, no. no. We're going to have no episode. Stuff. We're going to have no episode. Yeah, left. this is like the whole episode. So. Suddenly, yeah. Dan cares what people think. Come on, Dan. Who listen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. I don't care what these fucking freaks think. <laughs> um, I was going to ask, I was going to ask Becca if, mm-hmm. so have you been playing any new games recently? Um, I. Yeah, I've, she's been playing games with my heart. I tried, uh, people might get mad at this, but I tried to play cyberpunk and I could not get into it. That's, I don't think anyone's caping for, I okay. mean, it's a good game, but I, I don't think we have any like huge cyberpunk fans listening to the I show. I think I so gave it like two hours and then I was just like, I just don't care. Yeah. Um, and then I played, um, actually Stefan, I think I told you that you and Jesse should do this on the stream, but mm-hmm. the dark anthology horror games where you oh, like try yeah. to keep everyone alive. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I played house of ashes last week and that was pretty good. Okay. Yeah. All right. I, cause I've started playing a game that I, cause you do like open world games. John was saying you I, probably, yeah, you, you might not like this game that I've been playing. It's called dragon's dogma. It's like an open world fantasy game. I think I've seen that promoted to me. It's, it's brand new. It just came out. The first one came out like 12 years ago. It's, it's fucking incredible. It's like it's the physics Capcom in it are so game, good. Right? It's a Capcom game. Yeah. So the engine, it's a little like, have you played like Resident Evil or any of the new Resident Evil games? No. It's similar to like motion and movement in that. So it seems a little like slow at first, but okay. I think you'd probably be able to pick it up pretty quick. And like the whole idea behind it is that you have this party of like NPC characters with you that you're kind of like handpicking and they have all this, they have like personalities and stuff and they're very funny and they're like doing a lot of the fighting for you as well or like with you. Okay. Um I I think you might like it. I posted some clips of it on my Instagram. John's shaking his head. But she would like it, it. You don't think she would like it? No. No. It's too you, Stefan said it's like D&D. You're not going to like it. Well, that. it's like D&D no, in terms of like not. the wor- the world you're in sort of, right? Um but did you like The Witcher or not? The Witcher was one of my top 3 games of all See, time. See, I think you I might like I think you might like this then. The combat is not that far off from The Witcher. It just has like way better physics. To okay. me, though, it looked like Dragon's Dogma was almost more like a command and conquer type like combat, not top down, but just yeah. the like the idea of you got like a horde versus a horde kind of thing. Or no, whatever. so you have like three pawns with you and then they're just kind of like there's like NPCs are just wandering around doing three pawns thing. with you. It's kind of like me on this pod. Oh, Becca is a pawn. Yep. Jesus okay. Christ. Wow. Um. Well, and then, or whoever the guest happens. Sure, sure, sure. Whoever the guest is. It's not yeah. Becca specifically. It's not specifically Becca. Um, no, but you're fighting like you're walking around. The whole thing that's really interesting to me is that it doesn't really have fast travel. So if you oh, want to go I hate for, that. Okay, I need never, that. Okay. You you can do fast travel. It's just an item that you have to buy in game. Uh that you can it's like a one time use thing. So you can use oh, that to fast travel. I'm so out. it means you have to like plan out your journeys a lot more and it'll take like thirty minutes to walk from one town to another. You're getting to all these fights along the way. Oh God, that sounds awful. I oh, hate it's, that. it's so, it's so much fun. It was one, it, a, lo- a lot of the inspiration was uh, taken from like GTA five is what the director said, because he wanted to have sort of this like emergent gameplay where like something would happen and then you'd be like, Oh my God. And then something else would happen like at the same time or right afterwards. And it'd be all this chaos that you like haven't planned out. 
Um, I've told it's, Becca it's to really play fun. GTA Five. I think you might I like hate, GTA Five. Actually, I hate driving cars and vehicles. Oh, that is sort of unfortunately a big part of. <laughs> but I said Auto though, Five. Do you not agree with this though? I think GTA is actually kind of a good series to like learn. She just doesn't like yeah. it because she's not good at it. The driving in like, GTA it's not is, like a racing game. Like, no, it's actually kind of a good way to maybe learn how to video the driving game in drive. GTA Five. Like I would say GTA Four, the driving is like tough. Yeah, it's much uh, more realistic in GTA. It's much more realistic, and it's, like, better in terms of, like... I, like, I prefer that to the GTA 5 driving, but the GTA 5 driving is just, like... You just, like, kind of point where you want to go. And, like, gotcha. it's it's pretty easy. And, you like, a lot it. of fun, too. I played um, L.A. Noir, and there okay. is some driving in that, and I just, and, like... I'm just, like, in a yeah. corner trying to reverse the whole thing. And that's, time. that's also, like, Rockstar, but I feel like the driving in that was probably not, like, the high point of the game or the selling no. point. No, and so, you can skip it sometimes in that game, so... Yeah. I think... Yeah. I think GTA five, you could, you could pick up and, and figure out the driving probably like it's not, right. it is pretty straightforward. And then just the walking around and exploring is really fun too. So maybe that'll be uh, my next move. Yeah. And I, I know I, John already has it cause we've played it online a few times. Oh yeah. So. yeah. GTA five is sick. Yeah. It's fun. It's great. I beat it twice. It's a great yeah. game. It's yeah. great. Yeah. I prefer yeah. four though. I think is what I've come around on. Yeah. I, I really never think- played the earlier GTAs because really? I because I was Nintendo like I always oh, just had yeah, Nintendo yeah, yeah. so I never like I played GTA one and two on PC. I loved those growing yeah. up. Those were so the much top fun. down ones were great. And then yeah. and then yeah and then I just that you never it. played. I played like all of them. Um, People bike. It's snowing a lot here, by the sure, way. Sure, sure. Like we've, got, we've gotten about thirty centimeters. Is someone biking thing. down your street right now yeah. in the snow? And doesn't even have the like fat snow tires. That just seems like crazy. Biking. And like, but even the fat snow tires, I'm like, we'll drive by people biking in the snow. And I'm like, what the fuck is your problem? Biking in the snow seems really crazy. It makes no sense. But I guess if you're in Calgary and that's like your only way to get around, you might not have a choice, but that seems. Yes. Like, but then you got to buy like a, a proper bike and like fat bike tires to yeah. do it properly. And that's like, and just Calgary get a doesn't car. seem like the most bike friendly city to no, start with. Absolutely. So. A lot of people bike here though. Yeah. yeah, but it's not. I wouldn't say it's like bike friendly. Like in the no, summer, it doesn't I could, have I could proper see like downtown lanes. doesn't right. have proper bike lanes. Are you kidding me? If you put tried to put bike lanes in downtown Calgary, oh people There's would no there'd be mass murder. Yeah. yeah, people would lose their. Oh, the whole town's gone fucking woke. <laughs> it's gone woke, and it's I mean, gone LGBTQ. People say that here, you know, gone, and like yeah. this is like the bike lane capital of North America, right? And and people, you still get like the super uh, rich like psychos down in like Kits or whatever complaining about them. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Well, in Vancouver has like the naked bike rides. Like if you did a naked bike ride here, the combination of boobs and bike lanes, the it woke, would, it would, the city would explode too much woke, from woke. Way, way too much woke. Yeah. 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 I was trying to figure that out this week. Becca was trying to explain to me this whole boobs, woke, anti-woke thing. I couldn't figure, I couldn't figure <laughs> it out. That's so funny to me because it's. It's just, I mean, it's just, it's just the culture war and it's just people wanting to, to grasp on to like, wait, what is this? The Sid- well, the thing with Sydney Sweeney, where it's like Sydney Sweeney is a blonde, uh, a, a hot blonde woman with big boobs. And that means she's anti woke. Yeah. And it's like, no, I've what missed are you talking completely. about? It's so all these, all these little like rat faced guys talking about it. Shut yeah. the fuck up. I don't want to hear this. You're ruining boobs for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's what some people were saying, though, is that like, Woke people and anti woke people can come together and agree on one thing, and that's Sydney Sweeney's boobs. Yeah, so that makes them anti woke. What yeah. are we agreeing on? That they're nice? No, that that those aren't anti woke. They're both. It's both. I think one of them is anti woke. The right one is <laughs> anti woke, and the left one is woke. I've maybe. never been so confused in my life as I am right now. You it's, and the listeners. Well, there's been in. a lot of there's been a lot of talk of Sydney Sweeney's breasts in the media yeah. lately for I, some reason. I only know about it because people post like screen grabs of it on Blue Sky or whatever, and it's like, can you stop posting screen grabs mm. from of like, like posting screen grabs of bad Twitter posts on Blue Sky is really annoying. It's like you yeah. know, I don't I don't want to. That's why I'm here. I that's don't want to here, see yeah. those posts. You know, I sort of feel like uh, you were you just had Google alerts set up for Sydney Sweeney boobs, and that's how you found out about it. I I do have have that set up okay. yeah just to yeah. be clear okay but, uh, that's important to just of get, course get across yeah 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 i mean i'm trying to stay i'm trying to stay woke in this sort of you know anti-woke society here in uh, in calgary alberta but of course it's not always easy yeah but you guys yeah. are you guys are enjoying it out there and yeah is it it's so it is it's almost april yeah and it's still snowing quite a bit this is but- the biggest snowfall we've got all year like really? the rest yeah. of winter has been totally manageable. Yeah, and it's like sunny as We've well. We've been right? so, so lucky. 
Yeah. I actually, this is a hot take, but I actually think the weather here is better than Vancouver. Oh, I thought I like famously is, I think, right? Like, because well, it, it doesn't when we rain, said right? we were right? moving here, the number of people that told me like, oh, the winters enjoy having winter nine months a year. And it's like, it's been sunny and beautiful most of the winter. I think just the fact that it's sunny sort of cancels out the cold. That's uh, what I'm to, saying. To I'd rather extent. have sun yeah. than dreary Vancouver where it's I, raining all the time. I, I understand that. I will yeah. say it was last week. It was like 21 degrees and sunny here. But it was that here, It was 18 degrees and sunny here. Okay. I mean, I think it's just going to be like that in a lot of places uh, from now on, unfortunately. But that was was quite nice. Um, It is, of course, like nine degrees and pouring rain today. So, um, you know, you're not like it doesn't. Does it rain in Calgary like that much or? No, it's actually like drought conditions. (laughs) Oh, okay. Well, the snow is actually good. Like this is this is good. We need the precipitation. But yeah. yeah, it's got, we've, we've gotten hammered this last like week and it was the same thing. It was, it was plus, uh, yeah, plus 18 last weekend. And then Tuesday we got like 20 centimeters of snow. Holy shit. Yeah. And it's still coming down right now. Yeah. Yes. It's been snowing basically for like five days straight. God. Yeah. But the other thing too is like snow here just isn't a big deal because they actually like take care of the roads yes, and everybody have, like, has winter money tires. To, to so it's actually, not. Yeah. yeah it yeah. does not shut down the city in yeah. any way. Yeah. What yeah. we would have spent on building bike lanes, we instead spend on ice salt yeah. or whatever the fuck they use here. Gravel, whatever it is. Yeah. I don't even know. But <laughs> when are uh, you guys coming to visit? Yeah, we're waiting here. I kind of, uh, I was talking to another uh, friend of mine who doesn't live in Calgary, but, but has family there, grew up there, you know, uh, Dimitri, John, mm-hmm. uh, I am, I am familiar. Yeah. So he's thinking about going back there for the Calgary stampede possibly. So uh, it'd be kind of I fun think to John's come away. Uh, what? I am, a, I am away. I will be it, in Vancouver. Oh, okay. Well, then well, par- well, most of the stampede, uh, the second weekend of the stampede is during the summit. So oh, you'll okay. also be away. Well, okay, yeah. never mind. Then. If you come I know, for the first weekend of the summit or the first weekend of the stampede, I will be here. So you know what that means? I just realized because because part of it, uh, talking to Dimitri, he was like, "Well, part of the fun is going to be during the stampede. It's it's like the Euro twenty twenty four like finals are happening as well. So that means those uh, yeah. are going to be happening oh. during the summit. That's going to be fun. Yeah, that'll be good. Yeah, I mean. I know for you, Stefan, it's a lot of like you would want to come to the stampede sort of for the animal cruelty aspect of it. But yeah, um, I do hate animals. Yes, exactly. So yeah. that'll still be happening whether you're here or not. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I didn't plan it on purpose, but I am gone for a lot of it. The first weekend of the stampede, I'm here and then I'm away at a curling camp and then uh, and then going oh. right from there. to Are the Are you summit. teaching at the curling camp or? Yeah, I'm just kind of I'll be. Yeah, just like instructing, That's hanging cool. out with the kids. It's like a it's a camp for kids. It's like thir- 13 to 18, I think. OK. And so, yeah, just go and hang out with the kids, teach them a little bit about curling. You know, I bet those kids get bullied a lot. <laughs> yeah, by me. <laughs> like You fucking <laughs> losers. What are you doing here? <laughs> I don't think. Honestly, and I mean, and I was a pretty big nerd in high school, but I don't think I got bullied any more for curling. Like, I don't think people really. Not to your face. Yeah, I'm sure behind my back. And I'm sure that it definitely made some girls be like, I can't, I could, I could never talk to this guy that curls or whatever. But, um, but I don't think, yeah, I never really got too much like, oh, you curl. You're such a loser, you know? Yeah, that's strange I think- to me. <laughs> well, I think it's like such a, it's not a, I don't think it's like a loser sport. Like I think, I think curling is cool, obviously. Thank you, Stefan. But I think it's just like, it's like an interesting like novelty. You know what I mean? Right. I don't think it's necessarily like nerdy. I'd right. say it's like, is it an old man sport? I would say it's more of an old man sport than a nerd sport. Mm-hmm. No, would you, kind would of you agree man. with that? Yeah. Uh, I not would... professionally. It's like pretty... It's like more they're young, pretty athletic, yeah. the people oh, who are no. actually good. I guess like now, but I, I when I think of curling, I do think of like old guys from Ontario. Like I think of just because yeah. my, my grandpa curled, right? So yeah. I just think of like that, you know, Kitchener, There's Ontario. definitely lots of old people who curl. and there, But yeah. I would say there's also a lot of nerds that curl. Okay. I still think it is pretty nerdy. Yeah? Yeah. As far as like sports go? Definitely. If you're comparing it to other sports, I think it's it's got to yeah. be out there for one of the I, nerdier sports. I guess it like depends, like, because it's like, is it nerdy to play or nerdy to watch or both? Cause like baseball, I feel like has become kind of a nerdy sport to like follow. Right. Yeah, but I think it's stats. nerdy both. Yeah. 
like don't people call it chess on ice or something mm -hmm. like that? Oh, do, tells do they call you it that? that okay, nerdy. well, yeah, that is a, that is kind of nerdy. They I guess. do call it that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Do you consider it chess on ice? Yeah. Yeah. Are you He's good a at chess? chess? Master. Uh, no, I'm not good at chess. No, we tried to play it on stream once, and it's the angriest the chat has ever been at <laughs> anyone ever. <laughs> I was like, I was, I. I was in my chess club at school and like, I think when I was younger, I was maybe a little more interested in it, probably just because I thought it was like what smart kids would be good at. You know, I was in right. the gifted program. I was like, yeah, I'm going to be good at chess or whatever. Yeah. And then I just think, I don't know, I, I guess I just my more attitude towards chess now is like. Uh, there's way other like way sicker board games than chess. So yeah. like, I don't want to, I guess it is a board it's game. A board it game, doesn't have yeah. a board. Yeah. It's yeah. technically a board. Like, is there on board game geek is chess on there? Yeah, I think so. That's really funny. Just rating chess. Just on chess. Board game yeah, geek. Let, let's see. Your, uh, it's gotta let's be, see, it's but, probably in the top a hundred. I would imagine. Right. I mean, it's pretty, yeah. Pretty sort of legendary game. Yeah. It's a classic uh, game. Yeah. <laughs> it is funny. Cause they, they put the, like, you know, the board game release date, beside yeah. oh. the thing and oh. so it says chess bracket 1475 <laughs> <laughs> chess is uh chess is ranked 441st overall seven seven point two and the abstract in the abstract board game category uh it's 47 okay all right it has 7600 comments on board game geek that's so chess. funny Someone wrote, uh, someone needs to nerf the rook. Someone gave it 10 out of 10 and wrote goat. <laughs> <laughs> chess is kind of the goat when it comes to board. Chess games, is kind actually. of the goat. Uh, okay. Uh, this is a good one. Six out of 10. Hey, the classic, the score is either three when I'm not in the mood or 10 when I am. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. I think. <clears throat> I mean, I guess that's yeah, kind of. I get, I get, I get wrote that comment. I get what most people who write this, uh, who are writing these comments, they just write like classic. Like, oh, this is yeah. just a classic. Uh, oh, this is a good one. Avoid. F I D E is transphobic. What does F I D E stand for? Oh, is that like the? It must be the, the, chess, it's oh, the International chess. Chess Federation. Yes. Um, so you so you got to avoid I think chess. Probably I presumably they've done. Yeah, I would imagine probably done some bad stuff. That yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. It's also just like people are writing like just the chess set they got. Yeah, They're reviewing their oh, own like chess they're rating set. it like someone just wrote wooden brown white. Okay. And that's I've got, like, only... I've got like the Simpsons chess, you know, I remember yeah. seeing that a while ago at like Spencer's gifts or whatever. Oh, like the little pieces are Simpsons characters. Yeah, pretty good. They obviously they have like Star Wars chess, you know, um, I did play Ticket to Ride a little while back, mm. and I'm surprised uh, at how long it took me to try that game. And it's not shocking that I both am a fan of, and I think I'm pretty good at, a board game about trains. <laughs> <laughs> Ticket to Ride, though, the only problem with Ticket to Ride is if you're playing the original one, if you know the strategy, like playing the game properly is the worst strategy. Right, so there's like a meta... There's in like an of, OP strategy in Ticket okay. to Ride. And what but, is that strategy? Well, basically, the 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 distribution of points for completing routes is not high enough. Okay. So completing routes, like chasing smaller routes, doesn't actually make as much sense as just trying to claim as many of the long routes as possible. That's kind of what I was doing when I was winning. So, so you should it, yeah. always be like tech technically the way the, the correct strategy is to take the lowest scoring routes possible because you, you lose points for not completing routes, right? Commensurate with how long the route is, right? Right, right. So you take the lowest scoring routes possible and then you completely ignore them and you just try to create the longest route using the, as many of the six routes as you can. And you will almost always beat someone who's chasing uh, shorter routes, just like trying to complete their route tickets. Interesting. I yeah. love that you're telling me this now after the many times you've beat me playing Ticket to Ride. So they've tried <laughs> to nerf. They've tried to nerf it by now. They 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 because they realized this was happening. So they made a new rule 
Uh, like some of the newer versions of the game will have like you get a bonus for the most completed tickets. Yes. So that kind of like balances out. But like the original game of Ticket to Ride. Yeah, that's the best strategy. We haven't played it a lot. With your family, we play it. Yeah, well. And you always fucking win. <laughs> what can I say? It's kind You're of good a broken at it. game. I, yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, this is a good chess review before okay. we get onto the social media updates. You will never catch me being excited to play a game of chess. Maybe it's because I played it so extensively when I was younger, but I'm so tired of it. I just get this feeling, almost like a reminder, that I should be playing something else, that I've moved on from <laughs> chess and on to better things. I know that chess slander is very common in this hobby, but I kind of get it. After getting in this hobby, there's just so many other games that give me a lot more joy. And I truly don't believe that it's this perfect game that a lot of people seem to claim it is. There's better strategy games than chess now. It's over. It's 500 years old, for God's sake. It's over is such a funny thing to say chess about chess. Chess is over, dude. Chess is Especially because I feel over. like it's it's kind of experiencing a resurgence in popularity. Like it's, it is it, for sure. It was yeah. pretty big on Twitch there for a while. I think it's pretty big on like YouTube and like... I, I don't know. I think it seems kind of more popular than it was like 20 years ago. Because of the Queen's Gambit show. Yes. yes. Right? Yeah. 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 It's, uh, it's, it's interesting. Anyway, speaking of interesting things, let's move on to our social media updates. What a fucking good segue. Now let's move on. It's time to discuss what popped up in your feed. Who are you following? What did you see? Sports or politics? Becca, we always like to start with the guest. What is going on on your social media? Well, I thought I'd do a little bit of a, a throwback um, because listeners of this pod enjoyed so much when I went back and found uh, some of John's old bad tweets. Oh, boy. That kind of like forced him into uh, deleting like the last decade of his Twitter history. Um, I'm trying to remember what some of those were like about Entourage that famously turned into merch for this show. A lot of them were about Entourage, I think. There's quite a few Entourage ones. A lot of them were directed at women as well. Okay. When you say well, it like well, that, well, that ad, I would say I would say they like... were about women. They weren't at the women. Uh, I mean, no, some of them even. were at the women. Oh, my God. Well, I mean... What, the tweets or what we're about to see, Dan? A little bit of both, I guess. Oh, no. Um, so, yeah, I've sent, uh, I've sent Dan a couple things. Um, so I thought for today, my social media update would actually be um, digging up John's Facebook history a little bit. Oh, my God. Um, so, right. John, I didn't know him then. Um, <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> clarify that. Well, one, yeah. Uh, but Facebook has... You would has, have loved me back then as well. Well... Well, uh, looking at these statuses, I'm not so sure. Um, really? You, so you're saying if we met like 10 well, years earlier, you wouldn't have been into me? Well, I guess my statuses were probably pretty bad back then, too. But I mean, you come on my own podcast and you. Are you going to let me speak or <laughs> um, silencing women? <laughs> That's Face what most of the statuses are about. <laughs> <laughs> Facebook has this feature where you can just like go to someone's page, click a year, and it will show you everything they posted in that Great year. feature. Wow. So I did not have to like actually scroll all the way back to these, but the year is uh, around 2008. Oh. Uh, when so do I'm you, 23. When do you think you first got Facebook? 2008 is where I started 04, looking. Because Because uh, when I first got Facebook... It was when you had to have a university email address to get it because it was still like connected. Oh, so okay. you, yeah, when I first got it, uh, it was like UBC got Facebook and that was like a big deal. It was like, oh fuck, like we can get onto Facebook now. And it was all connected to your classes. So you would like right. go on and you would put in like what classes you were taking at university. And then other people that were taking those classes would show up or it was almost like they created groups like before groups existed. Um, and so, yeah, it would have been, it was probably Oh five, maybe Oh four okay. or Oh five. Well, yeah. I didn't go that far back. Maybe they might not have even had statuses back yeah, in the early days. Too. I don't I don't think they did. I think it was just, you could post to your, 
No, I guess they would have because you would have had the Facebook wall or whatever. Wasn't it anyway. just wasn't anyway. it just like John Cullen is dot 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 and then you'd say like what yeah. they yeah. were doing? Yeah, well yeah. you'll see some of that. So okay. um I sent Dan a couple. I don't know that we necessarily have to go through all of them. I think there's I sent a few about- that I definitely think we okay. should show. But, okay. uh, here, I'll well, put up the first one now. Is that I kind of numbered them. Um and if we don't get to all of them, that's okay. But I thought what would be fun is actually um hearing them read in Stefan's voice. So if Dan can put them up on <coughs> the screen okay. and uh, then have the Stefan one. read them. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> Come uh, on. So what what's the date? Uh what's the date of it, Stefan? This is March twentieth, twenty ten. Okay. So, okay, almost so exactly 14 years, years ago, ago yeah. rode the elevator with all the remaining models on Germany's <laughs> next top model. Breathing <laughs> equals failure. What does that even mean? They were so hot I couldn't breathe. But that's saying it that way doesn't make sense. It no one says sense. breathing oh. equals failure. Have you ever been on an elevator with all of Germany's? Have next you ever been on Reddit? <laughs> yeah. Why this, wouldn't you say like I was? Like out of breath or blown away, but saying breathing equals failure. I thought that That's was like an early 2010s internet way of talking. I feel yeah, like. Yeah, it's like an so. emo kind of, uh, you know, it's my favorite Fall Out Boy song, Breathing Equals Failure. Oh, this uh, is... I will say it. Dan, why it, are you opening this in VLC? It's a picture. Because it's shit. Why are you busted. Asking, Shut the fuck up. My whole setup is fucked Sorry, right now. it's just insane to open a picture in VLC. So I love it. Thank you for blurring the names, Dan. I forgot to tell you to do that, but you figured it out. Yeah, no smart. problem. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's okay. My dad and I have never really been like, we don't really talk about like women or anything. Like, you know, I think some people have that relationship with their dad where it's just like, oh, you know, this actress is hot or whatever. Like, my dad and I did, never talked about that, but this was really, we were in LA, we were on a, we were doing like a road trip to go watch hockey and we were staying at a nice hotel in downtown LA and we were both on the elevator and like six of the most gorgeous women you've ever seen in your life just all got on the elevator at the <laughs> same time. Yeah. Well, I didn't know you and maybe you were there. I don't know. Just <laughs> Germany's next top model. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And uh, it was just like one of those moments where my dad and I just kind of looked at each other like, all right. <laughs> oh, my God. It was cool. Oh, my God. So, uh, yeah, we can probably go on to the next one, Dan. All right. Here's the next one. Go for it. Seven. This is actually oh smart. Oh, my God. No, this what? is great. This is good. <laughs> go for it, Stefan. I would tweet this today. No, come on, dude. I don't want to say this because it sounds like <laughs> say I'm it, saying Stephen. it. It's going to end up as a okay, Go Off I... King sound alert. Oh, this is on Christmas 2012. <laughs> <laughs> I have Jesus. lots of thoughts on Christmas. Yeah, this status goes out to all the ladies who put makeup on this morning before they opened <laughs> gifts so they didn't look bad in the Christmas pictures. Respect. That's smart. This is just... 34 likes. Yeah, this is just likes. Likes, 10 comments. This is John Cullen's brain before like the internet poisoned his brain. Poisoned or fixed? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> John, you're very brave for yeah. airing this stuff out. I don't I think this is totally acceptable. John, <sighs> this is a this is smart. This is a smart tweet. You got to have that you got to have the matching PJs, you got to look good in the Christmas photos. This was honestly more like I think this is reading more earnest than it should. This is more like a joke, like, oh, you know, like you can notice the people who put effort into like, I know I'm going to be having right. Christmas. No, I think story. that's how I, people interpret it. Oh, okay. I get, well, yeah. then I'm good. Great yeah. joke. I okay. was two years into being a comedian this at that point. This is a joke? Okay. Uh, <laughs> good tweet good, or good status. All right. <laughs> uh, next, Dan. Oh, this is a classic. No, this rocks. October 21st, 2010. I just found out from my landlord that when I get an HD TV later this month, he's going to let me piggyback on their HD for free. And then all caps, no spaces. Oh man, life is good sometimes. Hashtag don't tell Shaw. That's a win for John Collins right big. there. That's yeah, that big. Yeah. I'm with you on this one. It is. Okay. It, this seems like it was like 40 years ago. I just that, like that the all HD caps. TV was like a separate thing, you know? Yeah, yeah. it was. I remember, no, I remember like, yeah. I remember thinking when I moved out of my parents' house, like I got to get an HD TV. Of course. Yeah. And then, yeah, I think the concept, like this would be totally normal now. Like I was living in a basement suite. 
Yeah. So that was the idea. He's like, oh, I think we can just get another box from Shaw and you can just use that. Like, that's not a novel concept, really. But it was like, no, whoa, he's then. just going to let me have another box. This yeah. rules. I that's just very liked funny. the all caps, no spaces. Yes. It's very wholesome. Oh, man, life is good sometimes. Mm -hmm. One that like, was like, one like, like four comments. A lot of like a lot of the old tweets you found. Mm hmm. Where it'd be like, oh, this amazing song came on in I my car. I had a great day, signed John Cullen. I love that. John, you're so, All you're right, so precious. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's the next one. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? This movie did have a good soundtrack. So yeah. John this Cullen. This is the one with the Daft Punk soundtrack. Yeah. yeah. So this is, this is yeah. one where it used to be like you would, because it, it would be like your name and then like is about to do whatever yes. is going to do this. Yes. So this is John Cullen, your name up there is about to see his first movie ever solely for the soundtrack. Tron legacy. You're mine, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> it's also so funny because John doesn't see movies no, I know. and I just loved it. It's very funny that you've seen Tron I, legacy. I genuinely went to the theater cause I was like, I want to hear the soundtrack in theater sound. Yeah. That's re that's reasonable. But the movie was shit. And the soundtrack honestly great. wasn't that good either. They're making another Tron movie, I think, too. Yeah, so. it's crazy. Uh yeah. D Rezzed is a very good song from that soundtrack, but okay. most of it is is it's just fine. It's not yeah. amazing. But yes, yeah. I did I remember, see that I do movie. remember it being like a big deal that Daft Punk was doing the soundtrack. Oh yeah, so, totally. Yeah. 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 All right, Dan, I think there's two or three left. We might as well just do them all at this point. Yeah, oh, this yeah. next one is my favorite, I think. Okay. Uh, okay. Here here we go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> ah. You also have to. I know people can kind of see the video if they look on YouTube, but you also kind of have to explain the photo, Stefan. Yeah. So the the picture is. <laughs> you've what? <laughs> I'm doing November. This is. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing November. Sure. What are you doing with your November first, twenty ten. You're doing the Lin Manuel Miranda lip bite. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the haircut uh, is incredible. Well, Do you I, have the haircut? It was just growing. I had just shaved it. So that's like what my hair looks like when it grows back from shaving right. it. Your okay. hair looks crazy here. Yeah, it's not good. It's bad, um, bad you, hair for you've sure. You've got the pencil on the ear, yeah. which, you, which, which I, comes up here. Yeah. Uh, you're, you're looking at the camera here. Stash day one. I'm teaching library today. Note the pencil and librarian sweater. It's cashmere. <laughs> and it's a red sweater. You can tell it's a nice sweater. It is. From, I got it at a thrift store and it is yeah. pure cashmere. And it was a go. very nice sweater. Yeah. I just love this one. I love the lower lip bite and yeah. saying it's cashmere in the same post is just yeah. really very, very. This is just. You don't John think I look Cullen hot in this pic? Distilled. Uh, it's not like the most flattering angle per se, but it kind of looks like you're trying to look hot, which I think makes it fun. I don't. But the thing is, like, I don't. I, I, I'm. I know of my mindset at that time, and I don't actually think I was like trying to be like, hey, I'm biting my lip because I'm sexy. I think I just was like, I, what else am I supposed to do with my face? Like, I don't I don't think I was like, hey, here, check out this yeah. sexy pose or whatever. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. All right I think there's the one, one or two more. Yeah, there's two left. Okay. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so I love, this is why I wanted Stefan to read them. This is uh well there's a Kings of Leon song that came out about this time. Yep. This is September 24th, 2008 and again this is the way Facebook status has worked back then. And it and it's just your name and then you wrote the status after and the status was John Cullen's sex is on fire. Mm -hmm. And then someone commented and said, "Ouch, that can't be a good thing." That's his cousin. I was, yeah, I was going to say it's a family member. I feel yeah. Like. Um, and very, I just, very funny. I mean, posting lyrics as your Facebook status is like, obviously everyone was doing that back then, but yeah, there was a I lot mark of down that. the timestamp of that for Jesse. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. This That's, was definitely not related to anything sexually that no, was happening it was in just my the life. Song I was a huge liked. Kings of Leon fan. Yes. Well, I still yeah. am, but yeah. yeah. I just liked this one because I thought of your cousin who's like a little bit older than you, mm -hmm. maybe not realizing this is lyrics and thinking you have like a sexually transmitted infection. Or and I something. was trying to let everybody know that. <laughs> yeah. She's like, ouch. Ouchie. <laughs> All right. Last one, Dan. All right. Last one here. That's just oh, good. That's, that's, you know, I what? don't even really. Well, it's a, it's a movie quote. Mm -hmm. uh, this is John on September 2nd, 2010, saying, I'll be your Huckleberry. Is that okay? I guess I'm just not getting it's from the Tombstone. It's from the yeah. movie Tombstone. Val Kilmer. 
Val Kilmer playing Doc Holliday, and I think I had just seen the movie, so I just I thought. So that was it's a, a cool... romantic thing. No. Oh. No, if no. you had if you had said we're I'm going to show like six or seven posts from John and and how many of them are about movies that he's seen? Yeah. I mean, I was at zero, and it was yeah. two of them. Yeah. That's crazy. No, he, he it's it's actually like a badass quote. Like someone it wants to duel. And he's like dying. Oh, Doc Holliday is dying you, like, of tuberculosis. Oh. And so they want to duel. And and I think he, the person wants to duel with Wyatt Earp, I think is the context. And then Doc Holliday is like, you want to duel? And he's like dying. He's like leaning up against a tree. And he's like, I'll be your Huckleberry. Gotcha. I thought yeah. this was like you kind of subtly making a message to a woman or something. I mean, maybe <laughs> that too. Who knows? But. Yeah. Anyways, uh, that's just a little blast from the past. That's really good. Um, Wonderful. Facebook status. I'm going to stop inviting you on the show. <laughs> Thank you, Becca. No, I'm going to invite you more. <laughs> Never ends up well for me. We should do an entire episode of just John. This is really, really posts. good. John, yeah. thank you for being a, a good sport as well. <sighs> yeah. yeah, we love you, John. Honestly, these were not that bad. So <laughs> I think you're fine. I think the first one's probably the worst one. Breathing yeah. equals failure. That was, yeah, that's, yeah. Again, so. I bring it back to... All of you should try to be on an elevator with six contestants from Germany's Next Top Model and see how you do. Well, I'm not going to post breathing equals failure. Yeah, that you, doesn't I think I'd be f- fine. Yeah, you should. I would. I would post like Ich bin ein horny or something. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, same same basically 2010 yeah. breathing equals failure is the equivalent of 2024 it's been horny yeah uh <laughs> Steph, Steph, what's going on well i know this is already this is a segment we're doing already but i kind of have a segment within a segment john oh okay. um, i don't know what that means this is uh uh let me what's the, what did i name this what's on Stefan's for you page where we kind of check how my instagram algorithm is doing oh, okay okay uh, and I just want to play this first and let me know if you can hear this. Okay. Yep. What's on Stefan's for you page? What's on Stefan's for you page? A game speed run at record pace. A senior cat without a face. What's on Stefan's for you page? Okay. Well, I people just, are always hoping for the Radiohead uh, parody song. Yeah. <laughs> introducing you know the new segment. You know what's funny is I've used that exact song for a Golf Kings parody song as well. So I think it does lend itself well to parody songs. To be honest, um, Radiohead or just that song in particular. Well, I think Radiohead, but that song specifically, I think, is uh, yeah. What song is that again? That's Jigsaw Falling. Jigsaw. Into place. Falling you nailed the place, vocal yeah. on that. I got it. Hey, it was on thank in you. Rainbows. Yeah, thank people you. are always saying Stefan's sort of like a uh, young Tom York. Yeah. Yeah. Just just how pale and sickly I look. I think. Yeah. yeah. Exactly, and you how jittery. Yeah. Anyway, um, I am getting a lot of senior cats recommended on there, which is annoying because it'll be like it'll be a thing where it's like, oh, oh, I bet you won't follow a a 25 year old cat on Instagram. And it's like, no, I won't because you're going to be posting in six months that it died and I'm going to get sad. But the thing I've been getting on there a lot. I should start following them. Okay. Well, it's not because I follow it that it dies, but um, the thing that I've been seeing on there a lot recently, it's because I just liked a couple of the videos, is um, floorball and bandy highlights. And they're so interesting to me because they're really cool. Floorball is basically, it it reminds me of just like floor hockey, essentially. Um, It's a little different. Bandy is crazy to me because when you watch the highlights of it, it looks like an AI generated, like it looks fake. It doesn't look real because like it looks like if you typed hockey into AI, yes, it would spit this. Out. Yes, because it's hockey. It's essentially it's hockey, but it's like you're it's played with a ball and it's played on an ice sheet that is the size of a soccer field. Mm. And the nets are bigger too. the nets are like not soccer uh, goal sized, but like closer to soccer goal sized. And it looks like the goalie can can never stop the ball. It just looks really crazy. This is a here's a highlight uh, that I got on my for you page and it just it looks because they pull back with the camera too so you see how big it is and it just doesn't look real to me this is new to me i've never heard it's, of this it's quite cool it's like, like a it scandinavian is, thing, it's russian right? and swedish mm-hmm. i think it's oh, really russian. big there okay. um and then like floorball is is scandinavian as well but like i just kind of like getting highlights of sports that you're not necessarily super familiar with but you can be like i can still tell that was like a cool play um but i think what's interesting about this is that the players get up to speed they get up to really high speeds because they have so much longer to skate. Right. 
Um, but here's here's the clip that I uh, that I found. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the, the the top comment on this is, "What is the goalie supposed to do?" And you're gonna kind of see why because it looks impossible to stop. I'm what excited. is the goalie supposed to do? Okay. It's really funny how big the net is. What? Oh, okay, we didn't need audio for that, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> like it looks, this looks fake, right? Yeah, yeah it, does. it looks it like a real? video game. Yeah, yeah. It, it <laughs> looks just cool. like, yeah, I guess that's in. I don't know. It looks cool. I think this would be a very fun sport to watch and play for sure. But like, it just seems like it doesn't seem like a real sport. I it think. looks like a bunch of four year olds playing on like a full size yes. soccer field. Yeah, and because they're playing with a ball on the ice too, right? Really? Um, I think it's like a rubber ball. Yeah. What the fuck? Yeah. It's it's really interesting. Um, and this so is like popular some places? In in Sweden and Russia and I think Finland, it's it's quite big. Like professional leagues in this? Yeah, I think what? so. Yeah, so it's about the size of like a field hockey net, I would say. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah, what I it looks like. It's exactly a field hockey net. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, just it it's so there's something so weird about seeing a sheet of ice this big. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then it, like when I first saw it and then it cuts to the net, I just like laughed cause it's just like, yeah, you don't expect that that's what the net's going to look like when the guy's winding up for a shot. No. Cause the floorball net is like a, is like about the size of a hockey net. Yeah, it might even be yeah. smaller actually. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just, I do like, uh, getting, uh, stuff like this recommended to me on Instagram. I've now followed the just bandy account <laughs> and I'll be getting a lot more bandy, uh, in, in the weeks to come. John happy for you. Thank happy, you. happy Thank for you. you. Yes, yeah. this is this is definitely one where uh, you'll want to go to the YouTube because this video has no sound, but it is really perfect. OK, uh, this is this is from, on Twitter, uh, John. Yeah. Well, but w- watching us on YouTube. watching us like watching this episode on YouTube so you can see this video. No, I but if not, yes, these, no. I just forgot we do video episodes. My you mind. can go to Twitter. <laughs> uh, friend of the show, Vince Mancini. Uh, <laughs> He you have a host of pod yourself a gun, pod yourself a wire uh, or whatever the fuck the wire one's called. I think that's what it's called. Uh, but Vince just wrote for everyone having a bad day. Please enjoy this surveillance video of my brother in law spraining his ankle on flat ground outside of his office. All right. And it is. I mean, it's really special. Here we go. Oh, oh, man. Oh, I know no. what that feels yeah, like. Yeah, I've done that too where you just step wrong. It sucks. <sighs> it sucks because it just makes you feel like I've I forgot how to walk. Yeah. Right? Like I'm a human being. And it's mo- it's it. it's just you've like <laughs> it's so oh my god, yeah. I mean, I've dropping been the there. binder. He's is got really his hands funny. on his knees. Is he wearing a vest also? Yeah, he's wearing a vest. That's... And then keep it going, Dan, cuz he's going to go he's going to go and just like get sit, denial. sit down on the curb. <laughs> what? Is he wearing uh, like bad shoes or something? Cuz I could see that happening if you're wearing flip-flops. I think he's wearing just like regular shoes. I think it's just regular shoes. I've just definitely done that where like you, your foot goes down on kind of, even on flat ground, your foot goes down on kind of a weird angle or something. Right. Yeah. And it just like gives out. Right. Oh, but he goes to pick up the binder. He's still like, fuck, this actually hurts even more than I thought it did. Oh yeah. He's doing the heavy breathing. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> oh, oh, look at him limp man. away. Yeah, that's rough. And then Vince followed it up with, there are so many things to love here. At first, I thought the binder drop was my favorite. Then it was the hands on head <laughs> reaction. But really, I think the hands on knees, let's take a breather moment, ties it all together. And then Vince wrote, important update. I'm being told that it was actually outside a client's office <laughs> that they were pointing and laughing out the window and halted a company-wide oh meeting God. in progress oh. to find the video. Oh, oh no. <laughs> uh, so, really uh, yeah, really, really good stuff. It's actually from 2021, but Vince had retweeted it recently, and I was just like, that is... That's just some quality That's content wonderful. right there. That's good. Yeah. yeah. Love watching a guy sprain his ankle. We've all been there. Beautiful moment. And speaking of beautiful moments, let's move on to our block tail. What did you tweet? You brought receipts. Block tail. Woo. No longer can see the post. It's a block tail. Woo. You probably deserved it. It's a block tail. All right, Becca, you've had some pretty unhinged block tales in the show's past. What do you have for <laughs> us this time? Yeah, this is not any less unhinged. Um, 
Yeah, it's a hard story to explain because I don't even fully understand what happened, but maybe you guys can kind of help me tease apart what you think happened. Um, I don't know if I've talked about this on the show before or not, but for those of you who don't know, I was married before I dated John, so I'm a previously divorcee. Yep. And um, a couple months after my ex and I broke up, I got tagged in this weird Instagram post. Um, I'm not going to name my ex. I don't want people to look him up. I'm just going to call him Jim Bob. Okay. Um, So first thing that happens is that I get tagged in this post. And this post says, Jim Bob is a bad man who makes innocent people sad and ruins their life. Oh, my God. Hope someone will break your heart as well if you have one. So I'm already like, what the fuck is this? It's not an account I recognize. It's not a name I recognize. And they've tagged me and a bunch of my ex's friends on this post. Sure. Um. So I messaged my ex and I'm like, hey, I got tagged in this weird thing. Do you know what this is about? And he's like, I have no idea who this person is, but... Everyone who follows me on Instagram uh, has been like, they've been tagging people that just follow me so that they see it. So I'm like, oh, that's kind of weird. And then a few days go by and I get a DM from this account and it is insane. Um, They messaged me, Beck, I'm begging you, if you still can, hurt him. I will be praying for you. Although... I don't believe there is a God. Jim Bob killed my relationship. And if he still has a heart, if you can hurt his heart, all my good wishes will be with you. (sighs) Holy shit. And then a few minutes go by. I obviously do not respond to this. And then this person goes, I'm happy for you that you're not together with him anymore. Now, nobody knew that me and my ex broke up at this point. It was not public knowledge. Like, our immediate families probably knew. Right. Uh, This is a few months after we broke up. I think I had just recently moved out of the place that I shared with him. And I do not know how this random stranger on Instagram knew that we broke up. That really freaked me out. I ended up messaging my ex again and was just like, hey, I'm getting messages from this person. He still didn't know what was going on. And I ended up blocking this person. Uh, I tried to find them on Instagram today to see if they still have an account and I couldn't find them. But um, yeah, I don't know what those messages are about. If this person was like not well and perceived that something happened. I mean, I think they're definitely not well. Yeah. Um, But like my, my first thought on reading that was like, you know, maybe my ex like slept with this guy's girlfriend or something. And so when I was texting with my ex about it, I was like, do like, did something happen with this guy's girlfriend? He's saying you like ruined his relationship. And he's like, honestly, no. He's like, I have no idea what this is. And then the other thing that I thought maybe it could be is that um, my ex was a, a art, like a musical artist. Right. Decently known in the EDM world. Okay. And he has a lot of songs that are kind of like breakup type songs i guess okay so i also thought maybe this guy's girlfriend like listened to the lyrics of one of my ex's songs and decided to break up with this guy and was like oh these lyrics really spoke to me or something and this guy's blaming him for the relationship ending but then as far as i could tell on this person's instagram they do not live in like at the time we were living in the united states this person is like It was South America or something. So I have no idea what those messages are, but I still to this day do not know how this person knew that me and my ex broke up. There was nothing on either of our social medias. We'd only told people really close to our families that we were breaking up. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. So I don't know if you guys have any hypotheses about what you think else that could be, but it was so bizarre. I think he slept with the guy's girlfriend. But That's, they weren't even in America. That's what I couldn't figure out, too. I still think that he slept with the guy's girlfriend. 
Yeah, could be. Maybe that's how he would have known we weren't together anymore. Yeah, the know. song theory is interesting. I'm going to go with that because that's that's really crazy. It was me. Uh, it's time to finally <laughs> come clean. Uh, I am the mysterious South American man. Uh, no, yeah, I, I it it is just like I, I think it could have almost been like some kind of strange, like not bought, but just like some kind of elaborate so. con. But then, yeah, the fact that they knew that you and him broke up was so that's weird. really strange. It yeah. was so freaky. Yeah. yeah. Damn. Yeah. That's weird. That's very weird. So that's my block. It's a cra- It's one of the crazier blocks that we've ever had. I mean, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Like, I don't know what else it could be other than your two <clears throat> potential theories. Or this person is just not very in touch with reality and they right. they've heard something in a lyric or a song that they think is more meaningful than it is. Right. That it's like yeah. specifically about yeah. their partner or yeah. someone they like or yeah. I yeah. guess they that's might true, also yeah. just have put out a wild guess that you guys broke up or something too, right? Like if they're Maybe, really crazy and like it's just weird that obviously it had just happened. Yeah. So. It was yeah. It was weird to get those messages for sure. That's wild. Very weird. I uh I mean I guess it, it they're gone. So yeah. it would have been interesting to <laughs> try to follow up and be like, Oh, they're still, <laughs> they're still talking about, yeah, them. still they're really still mad, really mad about whatever happened on. in 2017. It's or, very yeah. strange. Yeah. Could, do you remember, like, did you look at their Instagram at the time? Did they have any other pictures or yeah. was this like a new Instagram account that was created just to do this? No, or what they was had the... other pictures. That's how I could tell that they weren't living in the United States where we were living at the time. And, um, I don't remember there being photos, like couple photos with a girl that would lead me down like a rabbit hole of trying to figure out who this potential partner was. It was just like photos of a guy that was probably like early 20s and lived in, I think it was South America somewhere. Uh, Yeah. So very strange. Yeah. That's wild. Yeah. Uh, Okay. Well, if you have a listener theory, you know, feel feel free to send it in. If you we, know, or if you know this, what person, happened? Yeah, please <laughs> let me know. Please let us know. We've got a good block of the week. Uh, this it's nice when uh, a block or a listener block, I should say. Uh, it's nice when a listener uh, is inspired by something they saw on the show, and uh, that's what happened this week. Uh, Tim sends in this block, and uh, Tim managed to get someone to. Uh, delete their Reddit account in a similar fashion to what Austin was talking about. So Tim writes, okay. Hey guys, listening to the episode with Austin Lonneberg and his block tail reminded me of a hilarious situation that I stumbled upon on Reddit while scrolling through the drums subreddit. I came across a post from a kid asking for feedback on his first performance. I'll let you guys look at the two pictures attached so that I don't ruin the fun, but needless to say, the kid deleted his account shortly after Love the show. Get Dan some water, Tim. So <laughs> why am I uh, catching this, strays here? What the fuck is that? Well, what you know. it, well. so uh, this kid writes on Reddit. I'm 12 years old and this is my first time with a band and spectators. I started one year ago. What do you think? And then Tim replied to them. I was going to point out you just outed your age at 12 years old and Reddit policy as an age requirement of 13. But then I saw your post history and I think there are probably bigger concerns, LOL. And the kid's entire post history is uh, is uh, sending requests to girls on Reddit for nudes. And oh <laughs> the entire thing is just... Uh, like there was one uh, R slash nude, non nude. Say yes. If you're ready to get your dick out and play with yourself to me. And the kid just wrote, <laughs> yes, uh-huh. <laughs> sending nudes to the first 69 comments replied, send nudes. Uh, you I cannot home- imagine being a, a horny teenager oh, with right access now? to the internet. Now it would ruin you. Kids should not be on Reddit. Yeah, <laughs> no. you know, I had home- access to the internet when I was a teenager, and I turned out fine. <laughs> yeah. That's I had true, unrestricted actually, yeah. access to the internet since I was like six years old. Yeah, yeah. We, and we what all could ag- go wrong. Exactly, and then this is really. <laughs> This is a, a a good one. You come home from work and I'm waiting for you. <laughs> what do you do? And he just wrote, I fuck you hard and eat your pussy. Oh, <laughs> oh God. <laughs> 
Um, uh, can we get a water check, Dan? What, when was the last time you had water? Um, I drank a bunch of water yesterday because I was moving stuff around in here and it's nice work. dehydrated. Nice awesome. job. Okay. Happy yeah. for you. Good job. Wow, that, that might be the best Dan water update we've yeah. ever gotten. Like the most recent amount of water you've had. Yeah, I had a really bad headache. So <laughs> it, was after, it was after I drank like three or four Red Bulls. Okay. So, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. That'll, yeah. that'll do it. Compensate. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, if you want to send in a listener block, you can do so by sending us an email at blocked at blockparty.com. If you want to donate to the show, it's at patreon.com slash blockparty. $5 a month gets you access to three bonus episodes every single month. Last week, we had Lance St. Laurent back on the show, a film scholar to review the Avro Arrow, CBC's most watched miniseries of all time, featuring a miscast Dan Aykroyd. Uh, it was a really fun time, so you can check that out. And this week coming up, it's the return of everyone's favorite, Heck Cullen, our serious interview series. We had sports writer and uh, radio personality for the Raptors and Blue Jays, Blake Murphy, uh, join us. We, uh, we learned a lot about uh, sports writing and... Uh, stadium food and uh, lots of good stuff. We had a great time with Blake. Uh, so yeah, you can check that out on our Patreon. You also get access to all of our back episodes immediately. Uh, so yeah, if you want to poison your brain with more of this shit, there's like 200 bonus episodes there. You can check out. We also have ad free episodes, merch discounts, a whole lot more. So check it out. Patreon.com slash block party. We're also on block party pod at Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. You can get the video of this episode on YouTube at blocked party. And we're also on blue sky at block party. And of course, if you like the show, tell a friend we are here at the end of the show, which means it is time for the top three. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Uno, 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 uno. Mustard. Three. Socks. Two. Girlfriends. Uno, 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 uno. All right, Becca, I know you've been racking your brain. Uh, what What's the top three going to be? What are you going with? Yeah. Um, well, I was thinking a couple months ago, you guys passed what five years of doing the pod. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And yeah, you, in November, you yeah. didn't really well, acknowledge six, six, it. Six years, six years. Six? No. November was six years. Yeah. We no. started in November, 2018. No. Yeah. But that's five years. That's oh, sorry. Yeah. Years. Sorry. Yeah. Five and a half. Yeah. You, sorry. Uh, sorry. This will be six years. You didn't year. really acknowledge it in any way or like do anything for no, it. Yeah, no, we didn't. Um, and when I was trying to think of a top three, I got John to send me uh, the list of all the previous top threes that your wonderful listener put together. Yes. Um, yes. And I would like to know your top three favorite top three now, do, do we have access? Before. Do we have access to the list right now? Well, yeah, John, Stephen, we have access to the list. No, John I know. I mean, it. can you can you link it here and I can oh, take a look? Because I I forget everything about every episode as soon as I'm done recording, basically. Yeah, as soon as you're done recording, you check out, and it's you don't think about anything until the next time we get on here. Basically, yeah, yeah. You do yeah. No prep. Well, yeah. look, I recorded a song for this one, so that's true. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. Okay. I liked it. Thank you. I dropped it in the chat, Stefan. All right. Let's the take top a look at three, this. top threes, top three, top three categories. You don't have to say like, obviously what right. the answers were for any right. of those or anything. Right. Okay. Uh, well, Becca, you got to start us off here. Cause you have also listened to every episode of the show. Yeah. So I guess from your perspective, this is like the ones you enjoyed yeah. the most as a listener. The ones that, yeah. Like are most memorable to me. I would okay. say. Okay. Yeah. To go with, to go with um, top three, uh, go, sorry, your number three. My number three is top three Olympic medals. Uh, that was Graham Clark. And I like a simple top three. I like one that uh, is a little bit, uh, I don't know, ironic or funny or whatever you want to call that one. And I just thought it was, uh, yeah, I thought that was a great top three category, Olympic medals. Okay. That is a good uh, one. Stefan? Uh, I'm going to go with uh, David Roth. I think his first appearance mm -hmm. on the show. Uh, things that you're looking forward to doing as an elderly man. Oh, yeah. That was a very fun one. I like that one a lot because it's something I think about a lot. <laughs> like what you want to do when you're an elderly man? I mean, it's just going to be this. I'll have a different chair, presumably. But <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you'll still be streaming and podcasting as an old man. I think so. I think yeah, so. why not? Eh? Yeah. Um, okay. My number three, I'm going to go, and this is a little bit of recency bias, but I'm going to go with Dave Harris, uh, porno mags, uh, your favorite porno mags from when you were a teenager kind of fits yeah. in with our block of the week. 
uh, this week, our listener block, but also Becca and I recently went to a vintage store here in Calgary and they had vintage playboys and I was like flipping through them and it just like the flood of memories was just <laughs> wild, not in a horny way. Uh, no. when I, when I was a kid horny for sure. But, um, that was like how we had to get porno when I was a teen. It was like, uh, I had a friend whose dad had a subscription to playboy and he just like stole a few of his dad's playboys. And that was like the first time I ever saw a naked woman. And so it was just like, the nostalgia, the flood of nostalgia for some reason, like looking at an old playboy was crazy. I don't know. Yeah. It just really brought me back to a time and place. Uh, so I'm going to go with that one. Dave Harris, porno mags from when you were growing up. Great choice. Becca, you're number two. All right. My number two, uh, I believe this was a Adam Christie episode. No, I know it was an Adam Christie episode. We got to have um, an Adam Christie top three. Oh, on, his on top threes are sure. so good. It was, it seemed very um, innocent or simple from the outset. <laughs> uh, it was top three things you like about your girlfriend. So I liked that for obvious reasons. But um, it also gave us the very memorable moment on the pod where Adam revealed that his girlfriend is actually the bone collector. Yes. yes. So uh, that Terrifying. always sticks out to me as a, a great yeah. top three. Yeah. yeah. Classic memory. Yeah. Uh, Stefan, you're number two. I'm going to go with, uh, this was Bobby Warner and he was in person. And this was a very funny top three to me because it was... Uh, top three restaurants in the area. Cause he was just like, he just wanted, <laughs> he was going to go get something to eat afterwards. <laughs> and he was like, what are some good places to eat around here? <laughs> that is uh, a good one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, my number two, I, I think, uh, this one was funny to answer, but also sort of a star making performance on the podcast, uh, that you would say this might be uh, the same as my number one, if you can be a star on this podcast. Uh, but it's Raquel Belmonte, the top POV, okay. uh, porno POVs where Raquel, uh, revealed that she wanted to get railed on a boat. Yes. Uh, it might be the hardest we've ever <laughs> laughed on the show. Yeah. And it was, uh, yeah, just like a very, very, and it was like, not even for me. Like I didn't really yeah POV scenarios. You would like to watch preferably porn, but it didn't have to be porn, I guess. And then Raquel was like, I want to get railed on a boat. And it felt like in that moment, everybody was like, Oh yeah. Raquel's one of my favorite guests. So yeah, uh, that was uh, yeah, that's my number two. All right. Becca, your number one. My number one, uh, it's actually also an Adam Christie. Oh. I could not find it on this spreadsheet, so I don't know if one episode was missed or if I am just missing it, so I might butcher exactly what it was, but it was something to the effect of if ketchup was sentient, yes. what top three condiments would fuck it or something? Yeah. Can you remember what it was? Yeah, I just remember writing it down on the... Uh, on the old top three whiteboard is sentient ketchup. But I can't I think, find it here on the list, but yeah, yeah. No, it's I think not, it's maybe think, the one thing missing from yeah, the list. Yeah, Sarah might was have just. But I think it was like maybe? what what condiments would oh, fuck ketchup? It might have been a bonus. Yeah, it might have been a oh, bonus because yeah, I don't be. think all the bonus all mm -hmm. the bonuses are not on here. Uh, it's just the regulars. Uh, yeah, Adam Christie has only been on one main episode. Really. And and he was on episode 100. Yeah, we got to oh, have him okay. back on for a main. Yeah, we do. It's been a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So that's my number one. Yeah. So that was a bonus episode. That's why okay. it's not on the list. Okay. But yeah, because yeah, when we do Hell Blocks and Cull yes. in the Herd, we still mm -hmm. do a top three, mm -hmm. um, but they're not all on this list. So, but that was obviously that was yeah, a hilarious top. Three. A great one. Yes. Stefan, your number one. It was the Raquel one. That's the, the specific one that came up. And I thought of that without the sheet even, but I'll, I'll do a different one here. And this one, I think I like a top three where it's like, if you knew what the top three topic was, you could like guess who the guest was that did it. Yeah. And this is ways that you would like to be killed, but survive in a cartoon. And it's our friend Branson Reese. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that's like, who else would that be? That's a very fun one. So. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, there's been lots of good death ones like Christine Bordelin Ways to Die in Ancient Rome was yep. memorable. And also yep. uh, Chris Locke's uh, Which Torture Instrument Would yes. You Like to Die By uh, was also good. Uh, but I'm, I'm again, I'm going to go for my number one. Another, I would say, star making top three uh, from our friend Raft. 
uh, top three things that come out of your body. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, was, uh, again, I think a moment where everybody was like, oh yeah, Raft is going to be on this show 10 more times. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and obviously they were a great guest even before the top three, but the top three really cemented it. Um, cause I think one of their answers was a baby, which I like, wasn't even <laughs> yes. thinking about in the moment. And then it was like, oh yeah, right. I guess that does come out of your body. Like, Did Raft also do top three holes? Yes. Raft was top three holes. I think yeah. Derek did that too. Oh, maybe it was Derek. I think that, mm. I think we've done that one twice possibly. But I feel like, De um, Raquel. Raft? Oh yeah. No, maybe. Yeah. Top three holes maybe is Derek. We at rafts are things that come out of your body, places to shit your pants <laughs> and things that could be dicks. Yes. Oh yes. So. I, I want to do an honorable mention too, which was Paul Bay. Uh, it was top three things in your earthquake kit. And I said tomato paste for some reason. <laughs> You got that might have been the most you've ever gotten raked by the listeners after yeah. like they just were like what are yeah, you talking about? Yeah, really stupid. Well, yeah. pizza toppings kind of started the whole That is, is true. That's is true. Sauce and cheese. And that was Andrea Jen, believe, right? Topping, yeah. right? That was yeah. Andrea. I think, God, there's right? so many yeah. good We've had a lot there's of so really many good good top 3. Top yeah. 3 things you'd want to be pegged with. That was a Raquel. Yeah. Uh, that was a Raquel one. That was recent. Yeah. Top three but yeah, items you'd like to I just to be really appreciate with. the listener who put this together because I yes, had thank some you. good laughs just going through and remembering yes, some of these. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, we got to share. I haven't shared the link outside of the Discord, I don't think. But so I'll put the link up this week. Sarah has every top three we've ever done on the show on here and every question that's ever been asked in a blocked party mailbag. Uh, so there, it's two different Google Sheets and it's really good. Uh, so yes, thank you. And, and yeah, there's, I mean, there's so many good ones. I also remember Brian Quinby, the worst restaurant atmospheres. That was sort of a legendary yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> worst places to sit in and eat cartoon <laughs> characters that you wanted. Fuck the first uh, one. That ever. was the first yeah. ever top yeah. three was hottest cartoon characters. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, it's a lot, lot going on, but, uh, anyway, uh, thank you, Becca. Great top three. Thanks great, uh, me. great episode. Thank you for coming back. Uh, before we go, what would you like to plug? Nothing. You what, don't about, want to plug what about your, your art? Yeah, plug your art. I just haven't been good at updating it. Uh, so? My so? art Instagram is Cold Handshake. I do some lino cut printing there. And uh, yeah. You can, you, can, you can plug stuff if you haven't been doing it. Like every, every time I, I play a guy in Rocket League and his name is twitch.tv slash something... And I go to check if he streamed. He hasn't streamed in like six years. And he has two followers. So you can plug anything. You okay. Yeah. 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 yeah I, I don't update it super often, but uh, hopefully doing a bit more of that coming up. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That's yeah, all. That's great. Okay. So give Becca a follow at cold handshake. You can follow us Twitter, Instagram, TikTok at block party pod, blue sky at block party video at youtube.com slash at block party. You can donate to the show at patreon.com slash block party. We'll see you back here next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.